Good afternoon or evening, it depends where you are. I have a good friend in Stockholm, Ronnie Gardner, great drummer, and he's, uh, I believe, checking this out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the first production. Um, the sound today, I hope, will be passable. We realize we need a, an adapter so we can hook up a mic for next week where I don't have to yell, I can just talk normally, so I hope at least you can hear me. And so next week the sound should be better. But thank you, welcome to this presentation and uh, my name is Larry Vukovic. Uh, my life has been like a movie, I come from Montenegro former Yugoslavia in 51 and San Francisco little by little I'm going to listen as a teenager to the bands of Duke Kellington, Harry James, Woody Herman, Lionel Hampton and then I meet great musicians John Handy, Bru Moore and Vince Guaraldi. I connect with him then I join John Hendrix, go on the road with him, play with Philly Joe Jones Elvin, Clark Terry, so it's been an interesting journey and it's still happening. So next week I will have a microphone where I can in a more relaxed way you know tell you some historic information. In the meantime I'd like to open with a composition by Harry Warren, American composer actually Italian ethnic background from Brooklyn. His name was Salvatore Guaragna and Academy Award winning tunes like You'll Never Know. Also When the Moon Hits Your Eye Like a Big Pizza Pie, that's Amore, that's Harry Warren. I Only Have Eyes For You, You're My Everything and this is from a Glenn Miller film serenade in blue.
there are some uh, wonderful recordings of this tune. Uh, Billy Eckstein, Mr. B, has a wonderful version and a bebop ballad version with Dexter Gordon. And speaking of lyrics, Dexter would recite lyrics before playing a ballad, part of the tune, to give the meaning what the tune is about. And Ben Webster and Lester Young would not play a tune if they don't, didn't know the lyrics. So this is Serenade in Blue. I'll just give you the last eight bars or so. Tell me, darling, is there still a spark or only lonely ashes of the flame we once knew? Well, with today so much dumbed down pop music, where do you hear the lyric lonely ashes of the flame be you? I mean, that's high poetry in those days. And um, I'll try another ballad and uh, I'll, I'll read the lyrics first, see if you can hear me. Next week it'll be better. My ideal was written by Richard Whiting, Margaret Whiting's father who wrote Beyond the Blue Horizon some other nice tunes. And my ideal deals will somebody ever find his ideal. And hope you can hear it. Will I ever find the girl on my mind, the one who's the one who is my ideal? Maybe she's a dream, and yet she might be just around the corner waiting for me. Will I recognize the light in her eyes that no other eyes reveal? Or will I pass her by and never even know that she's my ideal?
I put in uh, some off syncopated beats because a good friend, Barry Harris, I'm proud to have known Barry since 1980 and we're in touch fairly regularly. Barry told me that Monk lived in Baroness's house and I'll tell you the reason why. It, he, Monk's wife, they had a good relationship, but Monk, Monk's wife was making a living by juicing vegetables and fruits. So it produced an unpleasant, the blender high pitched sound. So she understood. So Monk lived there and Barry lived there and Baroness was a very distinguished lady. I met her, there was nothing going on romantically. She loved the music. So Barry said one day at the house, Monk played the tune together with Barry, maybe 50 times, they just kept going over it. So I put a little touch of that and Monk loved the uh, piece, My Ideal. So anyway, that's a little story. Right now, I'll play the Spanish composer Rodrigo. You're all familiar, I'm sure, Concierto de Aranjuez, guitar, and there were jazz versions. Miles did a nice version with Gil Evans. Uh, I thought I'd do something different by put a little flamenco touch. So I'll tell you a story after this. Concierto de Aranjuez. Thank you. 
the story goes when Miles recorded sketches of Spain with Gil Evans and this particular piece by Rodrigo. The story goes, Rodrigo, I guess he was conservative, he, he didn't dig it. And in my estimation, any great musician like R. Tatum, when he would play a classical piece, he would always give it the original connection, the authenticity. I thought Gil Evans did a phenomenal job and Miles' solos really captured Spain. So, to me, there was no reason to complain. However, when the album started selling thousands and Rodrigo got to the bank often, then he maybe had a different feeling. Hey, anyway, all kinds of interesting stories. Um, a lady composer that did some great tunes Bernice Petkera, she did Lullaby of the Leaves. I think she wrote this next piece, Close Your Eyes. Thank you. Uh, due to a uh, difficult economy, we didn't want to set any price on this, but I believe there is a either a logo or an icon for donations, so whatever you can do under these circumstances, I would appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh,
I had good associations with some great pianists who were very kind, helpful, and I was able to play a duet with Tommy Flanagan one time, a memorable experience. And one of my first two teachers were Richard Wyants from San Francisco, also Vince Guivaldi. Richard moved to New York, so I spent time with Vince. I would go to his house. He would play Bud Powell records, Oscar Peterson, Hank Jones, uh, Art Tatum, all kinds of stuff we would discuss. And Vince claimed to fame is Peanuts, but it was much more than that. He studied classical music. When you get a moment, listen to Cal Jader version of Thinking of You, MJQ dedicated to MJQ. Vince wrote it. It has a touch of Bach and Mozart. He had a nice piano touch. So later he hired me to play in his two keyboard quintets. Very exciting. And But Vince loved Strayhorn and he has a nice recording of Flower is a lovesome thing and Billy Strayhorn a genius a 17 lush life he was perhaps the first, I believe, in America to connect with Debussy and Ravel. Whole tone, scales, impressionistic harmony. Here is, flower is a lovesome thing. I formed a Vince Guaraldi tribute quintet which does the true side of Vince Guaraldi. Things like this, some bebop like I'm going to play in a few minutes, some boogaloo sounds, Latin Brazilian he did with Bola Sete, and uh, it's a wonderful band. John Santos is 
on percussion. Um, the guitarist was Josh Workman. My stepson, he moved to LA, but then we have wonderful guitarist from San Francisco, Jeff Mazzanari, excellent rhythm section, uh, Jeff Chambers on bass, and Akira Tana. So with this situation, there's nothing we can do. Hopefully we'll be able to play again. But one of the pieces that I wrote dedicated to Vince, he loved to play funky music. This is called Vince's Boogaloo Blues. Let me take a little sip of something. One second. In the past, I've seen some cats would have a coffee cup with booze in it, but what I'm drinking is Serbian coffee. Thank you. Another great pianist, a wonderful person, Bill Evans. I met him in London when I was playing at Ronnie Scott's club and I introduced myself and I said, Bill, what do you do when you travel and you can't always find pianos, you know, to keep in shape, you know? And he said, one time I didn't play for three months. I went to the piano and directed the head to make the fingers move in a relaxed way. It all comes from there and from the heart, of course. So I remember that. Next time I saw Bill was in Italy at the Pescara Jazz Festival. I was a member of Philly Joe Jones group. And uh, there, and then the last time I saw him was uh, just maybe a year or two before he died, wonderful saxophonist Noel Jukes and I alternated set with Bill Evans at the Great American Music Hall. We reminisced a little bit and he very quietly said, you know I did almost most of the work on Kind of Blue. Well, that's the story. Uh, Miles was very hip, he had ideas, but I think 
the reason he hired Bill Evans because Bill Evans had those harmonies plus the modal thing. So that's the way it is. And uh, so thank you, Bill Evans. Uh, I'd like to, I'm going to do a couple pieces. I'm going to do blue in green. And speaking of that, good friend, wonderful drummer, Jimmy Cobb, just passed away. We played in the 90s with a great bass player, Walter Booker. And then a few years ago, he came to the Napa Valley, Valley, the um, wine country area to do kind of blue. I organized a wonderful band for him. And we did play kind of blue. So this is to Jimmy Cobb and Bill Evans, kind of blue, blue and green. spots I haven't played it in a while but anyway that's the way it is uh, hope you got the main feeling uh, to me uh, the best Bill Evans was the early Bill Evans with Scott LaFaro it was of course very creative and uh, great fresh playing of that new style the thing is Bill Evans but by, by that time unfortunately was already hooked, you know, on age, and a lot of guys were, you know, Scott LaFaro, who knew what Bill could do, I understand, would go after him to quit that stuff, and, and he knew what Bill could do. Now, I'll give you an example. Bill Evans' first record on Riverside is called The New Jazz Conceptions. I believe that's the title. After that, everybody digs Bill Evans where the energy is high, I mean, is digging in. The early Bill Evans had a range of rhythms and dynamics. Later, it was good, but there were no up-tempos and that fire before it got hooked. So, on Everybody Digs Bill Evans, check out tenderly in three-quarter what he does, how creative he runs the phrases 
over bar lines, great playing, and I'm going to play Minority, another one, and then his version of uh, Olio is phenomenal, totally free and charging, high charging, so uh, I like to do Minority. Minority. Uh, let's see. When I was with John Hendricks in Europe from uh, 68 to 70, the first year we did a lot of touring playing in England, but uh, Musicians Union to protect their own musicians is very strict, which is understandable, you know. So when we played at the Berlin Jazz Festival, in 68, the owner of the club domicile, where I was part of the house rhythm section with a wonderful Swiss bassist, Isla Eckinger, we had different drummers, and finally Clarence Beckton came from our uh, John Hendricks drummer from the US, and we accompanied Slide, Hampton, Lucky Thompson, Clifford Jordan, many people, it was a great gig. John, John understood. He came there. We did a live record. I had to work. And while there, I don't know if he's listening from Caracas, Venezuela, good friend Chuchito Sanoja. He was studying in Munich with his friend Juan Romero, who played guitar. And Jesus Chuchito played guitar. These guys were on top of the new Brazilian movement, knowing the good compositions coming out. And they showed me this tune by Rio composer Roberto Menescal. I recorded it later on Concord, Tres Palabras, with Peter Escovedo, Tom Harrell, and great bassist Larry Grenadier. So you can go to YouTube and check it out 
Larry Vukovic, ah se eu pudes, ah if I could, a h c e e u p u d e s s e, another tune real. Here is the first tune. It's a slower, very beautiful bossa nova with some very hip moving harmonies. Thank you. Uh, there was so much music from uh, Brazil in those days. It was something. San Francisco, you wouldn't believe the club scene. If you go to my website, LarryVukovic.com, on the home page, you will see four half-hour radio shows I did at KCSM with Chris Cortez, talking about the clubs, what happened, and it opens immediately and then you have samples from the music that was happening in those days at the club. Broadway, Workshop, Sugar Hill, Vocal Club, Carmen McRae, Joe Williams, Jazz, uh, Basin Street West, Duke Ellington, Woody Herman, Workshop, Miles, Monk, Barry Harris, 
El Matador across the street. Brazilian group Joao Gilberto, also MJQ. You go to the end of Broadway, Copacabana. Cal Jader's side man, Man Manuel Duran, uh, great Latin. Then you go to Black Hawk in the Tenderloin. You go across the bridge to Sausalito. Trident, Brazil 66, Bill Evans, Vince Guraldi, Chet Baker, Stan Getz, I saw Kenny Burrell there, Yusef Latif. You wouldn't believe all the stuff that was in those days, and that's how it happened. But those radio shows, if you check them out, you can uh, enjoy it. Uh, the sound is good. Uh, as I mentioned, Vince Guraldi loved Bud Powell, and this tune by Dizzy Gillespie, Owl, Dizzy used to invite Vince to sit in with his big band when they played at the Birdland. Opposite, he was with Cal Jader. This is Owl. <laughs> more tunes I guess. Another two of my favorite pianists, Errol Garner and Red Garland. There are similarity a little bit in black chords but Errol Garner had his own personal sound where the left hand was a guitar and right hand played sometimes behind the beat. The characteristic of Errol Garner a 
like a gypsy, no reading music, gypsy aroma, just the music came from inside, phenomenal harmonies. His sister played classical music and Harold would listen to her and pick up the stuff and just play it by ear, the way gypsy Roma people play. And another thing about Harold, he had a rich, full piano sound, almost like hearing Rachmaninoff using the whole keyboard, low and high. I like to do a brief version of uh, I'll Never Smile Again. selection dedicated to Red Garland, I'm going to close with an original, and I'll tell you in a minute. Um, first time I met Red and talked to him was at a jazz workshop. He had a phenomenal trio, Doug Watkins on bass and Specs Wright on drums. He didn't know who I was. I said, Red, how do you voice your block chords? Now, there's a simpler way, but the way Red did it, it was more sophisticated. He said in the left hand, you have E flat, F sharp, A, and D. In the right hand, you have F, B, D, and F octave above. I came home, and this is what happened. Wow. Anyway, I like to do a little blues in Red style.
in Munich, actually, or Cologne, Germany, I met the wonderful Serbian trumpet player Dusko Gojković, who actually introduced me to the club owner. So I got that gig in Munich at the domicile, and then Isla Eckinger and I, Clarence Beckton, the drummer, wore the rhythm section for his international quintet in 1970, a live album there, and he brought from Holland an uh, outstanding saxophone player, Ferdinand Povel, who played different reeds, and we did a live album there. The thing about Dusko, he first recorded in the late 60s, Swinging Macedonia. Maybe you hear a little Count Dracula from Philly Joe. He has an album, Blues for Dracula. I did that too. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, next time. So Dusko did an album of ethnic music. So when I came home, he started hitting me. Then I did my own Blue Balkan with Bobby Hutchison and Eric Golub, 1980, 40th anniversary. We were supposed to play at Yoshi's, but they can't play now. Anyway, I did it differently. You know, everybody has their own thing. And I have originals, Belgrade Blues. I'm going to play Larry's Dance, Lazi Nocolo, and um, also Blue Balkan title track. And maybe next time I'll play it for you. So Bobby Hutcherson on Marimba. We wanted wood, natural sounds like uh, in the Balkans they use uh, cymbal uh, or some kind of a wooden instrument too. And then Eric Golo played a great violin, so you had an interesting sound of uh, violin and marimba, and this is Belgrade Blues.
thank you very much for joining me today. By next week, we figured out the attachment we needed to improve the sound and mic. So hopefully join me next Saturday again and we'll be working uh, on the improving the sound. This is all new, you know. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. And au revoir, au fiddersen, dovigenia. Fala Velika, thank you very much.